in part one, we talked about the ingredients used to make tequila, as well as the processes, both good and bad, used for making tequila. In part two, we talked about additives that are added to some tequilas and are actually hidden from you too. And in part three, we're going to talk about the king of headaches, the master of hangovers, and the sultan of sickness. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Mixto, right here on the Tequila Hombre, next. I know, I know, I gave it a big intro and it, all honesty, it really doesn't deserve it. We're talking Mixto. What is Mixto? Well, the norma, the rules that regulate tequila production, require that in order for you to call a spirit tequila, it must have a minimum of 51% Weber Blue Agave. The other 49% can be other fermentable sugars. Now the number one used fermentable sugar other than agave in mixed dough is cane sugar or table sugar. I know, I know, tequila ombre, how can they allow this? When did they start allowing this? What is going on here, right? Well, it all started back in the 1930s when the decision was made to start allowing producers to use other fermentable sugars in tequila. And it was primarily due to a shortage. When the um, standard actually came out in 1949, they went back to saying it had to be 100% Weber Blue Agave. But after a while, in 1964, they came out and said that, well, it could be 30% fermentable, other fermentable sugars, and then Shortly after that, it went up to 49% where it stays today. So you're probably wondering, well, how much tequila is actually made this way? Well, at one point, there was more mixto in the United States than there is 100% agave tequila. And I'm not sure if it's still that way today or not, but the number one selling tequila in the nation, Jose Cuervo, Especial Gold is Mixto. Yep, I hate to break the bad news to you. Additionally, on top of it being 49% cane sugar, they're also allowed to add additives to it. So all the additives that we talked about in part two can be added to this as well to try to make it taste better. So if you drank tequila and said, hey, I got a headache from it, I don't like tequila, it's probably because you were drinking Mixto. Mixto is a headache hangover just waiting to happen. Now there are some producers that are producing Mixto, but they're using higher concentrations of, of Weber Blue Agave. For example, um, Casa San Matias Gran Reserva in Mexico. If you were to buy the Mexican version, it is Mixto but it's 70% agave and 30% table sugar. And the only reason why they did this is they did a focus group in Mexico and found that the people of Mexico actually preferred the mixto over the 100% pure agave tequila. So they also use it as a gateway, kind of a way to ease Americans into uh, better tasting tequila. So you could start by drinking mixed dough and then progressing towards the 100% blue agave tequilas. I don't know if that works or not um, because people that I've talked to, you know, complain more about the headache and not feeling well and then saying, oh, well, I'm not a tequila drinker. It just doesn't agree with me. Not knowing that it's because they were drinking mixed dough with all kinds of additives and stuff in it. I know at this point you're saying, hey, tequila hombre, please save me from drinking this, I don't want a headache, I don't want to be hungover, how can I tell if the tequila I'm going to buy is Mixto or not? Well, this is actually very easy. If it's Mixto, it cannot say 100% agave on the label. 
So if you pick up a tequila bottle, like for say this uh, Fortaleza bottle, if you see right here at the top of the label here, it says 100% de agave. So you want to look for that on any bottle you pick up. If you pick up a bottle and it says 100% de agave on it, it is not mixed dough and you are good to go. Now, I can't guarantee the taste is going to be well, is going to be good on it. Well, because diffused tequilas like this Hornitos, since it is made with 100% blue agave, it says 100% de agave on it. <clears throat> but it is not good tequila. So just because it says 100% de agave on it doesn't mean it's gonna be good tequila. It just means it's not mixed dough. So you may get less of a headache from this than you will from drinking Cuervo and less hungover, but it still is gonna taste horrible compared to a beautiful tequila like this. All right, so that is our chapter, our edition, or whatever the heck you want to call it on mixed dough. Hope you enjoyed the series. Hope you learned some something. Hope you learned a lot, and hope this helps you in selecting better tequila, so you too can have a better te tequila experience instead of telling people how badly it knocked you on your butt and you, how sick you were after drinking it. After all, life is too short to drink bad tequila. See you next time. If you're new to the channel, please don't forget to subscribe. We have some great reviews coming up that'll give you some ideas, some good tequilas to pick up. Also, if you have some questions about any of the things in the series or you want to know some uh, questions, have questions about mixed dough or anything like that, please feel free to comment below. And uh, don't forget to click on the bell and be notified every time we post a new video. Thanks for tuning in. Again, life is too short to drink bad tequila. <laughs>